So one last little thing that I'm going to show you how to do that's completely optional. Um, I don't know how standard this is in terms of AAA workflow. Um, it's going to depend entirely on your shaders and that. But in Marmoset, you can actually add vertex colors and get them to contribute to the diffuse of the hair. Um, so what this is going to do is, or what we're going to do with it is basically bake in some shadows. So the way there's several different ways to do this, um, but I will show you my way. It's a very new technique that I've been doing um, that I only just did on one hair so far. Um, so it's not completely polished and refined and I'm sure there's better ways of doing it, but I thought it was worth including. Um, so what I've got here is my split group of hair and this is going to be handy because what we're going to do is group the hair in its la you know main layers. So I want to have all of these bottom layers. Uh, let's save those quadrate Yeah, so all of its bottom layers, middle layers, and then top layers, we want them separate. And with those, we are going to combine them. And then just to be safe, duplicate those. I like to duplicate my message when I do stuff like this because we're going to mess with the UVs um, and tweak and edit things. And if you just duplicate them and work on a copy, it just means that you don't break the original, you don't have to start all over again. So let's just name them so we can see what we're doing. So base, mid, and top. Yeah, so what we want to do with these is go to UV editor, select all of these, and then unfold, and then lay out. So that's just going to lay all the UVs out individually along here. And I'm going to just give these tutorials. And then we're going to export them. This was the test I was doing earlier. Um, so an important thing, I've been exporting as FBXs with triangulation on. Um, but with the vertex colors, it doesn't like triangulation for whatever reason, so make sure to turn that off. Okay. So bring in your hair. Because that's annoying. And then what we're going to do is bake mesh maps and we're going to bake just the ambient occlusion. And then we've got some ambient occlusion. Export this. Don't want it there. So now what we're going to have is three ambient occlusion maps and the reason I've done them separately is so that we can have um, more control over them because if you bake them all together you can't tweak anything it's just as is so yeah the base so we don't want completely black at all because uh, that's just not going to look right, unless you've got a really dark hairstyle, perhaps. Um, so I'm just going to set these to 50% for now. And just save over these. And 
actually for the top I'm gonna make it 20 and maybe the mid actually I'm gonna make it 30 okay so now that I've done that I'm gonna go into mesh display paint vertex color I'm just gonna flood it white just so you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna go into attribute maps import and because this is the base layer I'm gonna import base next layer and as you can see this is adding color uh, the gray color to the fair do the same for the mid and so what we can see here is what we want to happen is everything underneath is gray it's darker but then everything on top which is the stuff we can mainly see is white so now that i've done that i'm just gonna bring back should have named these properly so mid and top Just call this correct UVs and then we want to transfer the vertex colors over to the one with the correct UVs since we messed up the other one so I'm going to select the, the one with the vertex colors first and then the one with the correct UVs mesh transfer attributes all of this off color sets current and sample space is the topology because they should have the exact same topology so transfer and then what we should have is this now with the vertex colors and then it will have the correct uvs same again for this remember not to have triangulate on so now that we've done that let's fix the black spaces so yeah bring this in and then we go into albedo and we go into vertex color and as you can see whoops as you can see it's added a little bit of shadow And this just gives a little bit of depth so with this being blonde um, I feel like it makes it look a little bit muddy it's kind of messing with the color with the diffuse I'd already made so I'm gonna just tweak it a little bit I'm actually gonna turn this up to Let's try 70 since you don't really see it that much. And then I want that to be 20. Unfortunately, you have to go back in and redo this process. And you might decide that for the hairstyle you're doing, you don't want this on. You might prefer the look of it like this. Um, as I said, totally optional.
What is something I can do as well is hand paint it. So uh, maybe for the top, I decide. So yeah, say so that I want to paint in some more for the crown of the head for the part in like this. So I should be able to just literally go in like this. Uh, maybe we'll blur it. You can tell this isn't fully established into my workflow because it's a bit messy. Um, okay, I can't really tell if that's worked or not, if that's made any difference. Um, but yeah. Like I said, it's a little bit unrefined workflow for me. Um, I'm still kind of experimenting with it, but feel free to give it a go. Um, even if it's just in the most simplest form, giving yourself a little bit of extra AO. Or maybe you're working in Unreal and it might not be supported in the same way, but yeah, something to consider. <laughs> 